Hey, Amy, as we've been going through the prospects of this NAR settlement taking place, which if you don't know, it is taking place August 17th. There'll be some key changes as the way that it relates to how realtors converse with their buyers and sellers. We've been getting some questions as people have been hearing things in the news. So I'm going to share a few of these and hopefully you can answer these questions. Sure can. The first one that I was asked recently is why do I need to sign a buyer agreement? Great question. So it is now a requirement to see any home that you sign some type of compensation agreement with a buyer's broker. This was specifically put in place so that buyers and consumers are aware of exactly what fees could come up while working with a realtor. Now, there's not just a blanket agreement that you have to sign uh, to be with us forever. There's a few different ways you can do this. You can sign an agreement for one specific home. So if you happen to be online and you see a house and you think, I really want to see this house and you call an agent, the agent will say to you, okay, I will show you this home. But what I'm going to need to do is put in place a written agreement for this property specifically. And that just binds us together for that one home in particular. If you're more interested in seeing multiple homes, we can do an agreement for an, a certain period of time. We could do a week's worth of home showings. We could do a month's worth of home showings. That just specifically states how us as realtors are paid for our time and for our work with you. There's also a long-term agreement that we love to do with our clients that puts us together in a relationship that protects you a bit stronger as a buyer and a realtor agreement. And that also is in place for a time period. And should something come up and things change, we always allow an easy exit as long as we're not negotiating on your behalf for a particular property. Great answer. I appreciate that. You're in good hands with Amy. <laughs> the next question that I had asked recently is, can I still go to open houses? Will they still exist? Great question too. Uh, that one is actually interesting. You can go to an open house and any agent that's in that home is not required to have you sign an agreement because that agent is signed to work with a listing and to the work with the seller. So that in place is already enough to protect the seller as a client. Now, when you walk into that open house, you're not being represented. That agent is representing the seller so they can speak on behalf of the listing and not they won't be doing any sort of negotiations for you. You won't have any obligation to them. So feel free to join an open house or check out an online listing anytime you'd like. Oh, that's awesome. Why, as a buyer, why wouldn't I go straight to the listing agent with all these changes? Okay, so my answer to that is that agent who's representing the seller is negotiating on behalf of that seller with only the seller's interests in mind. So tell me, would you as the buyer be confident to go and work directly with that seller's agent without anyone negotiating on your behalf particularly? Mm -hmm. Probably not, right? So I would say that's probably the strength behind you would be having your own teammate in your corner for that. I feel like it's kind of like going to court and expecting that the other side, you know, attorney is going to protect you. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So Why they may not? be great people, but they are first and foremost aligned with that seller. Right. So speaking of what if there's a situation where the seller is not offering enough compensation to pay for our services as a buyer's agent? Sure. So that will probably come up. And what I will tell you is that as your buyer's agent, I will negotiate my absolute very best to make sure that that seller credits you as the buyer to compensate me as your realtor in our contract. That's a great point too. And you know, at, we have all these changes coming up and I know that they can seem a bit scary and big changes um, are never easy to navigate, but I personally am excited about the changes coming our way because it enables uh, experienced realtors like Amy and myself to really show our value and share with you how we can go to bat for you and get you the very best product for the very best price possible. And that's something that we love to do. Amy, as you know, we work with a lot of sellers and that is our, one of our biggest passions in our real estate career is helping our sellers get the best results. So how do we handle it when we're working? If you're a seller out there, how, how would you suggest that they handle this compensation question? 
Sure. I actually was lucky enough that the day our new listing agreements came out, I had a listing appointment. So I had the ability to read through the new form and figure this out right away. Uh, what we decided to do was to best protect my seller. We agreed to the compensation for the listing side, and then we've left it open-ended sort of in, a, in the contract. Um, what I mean by that is I want my sellers to not show their cards. I want them to get an offer in with an offer of compensation written into the purchase agreement by the buyer's agent because that puts the ball back in our court to decide how much we are okay with sharing. That will protect them because what if we're able to save them money? I don't want to lay it all out there and then maybe we could have saved money for them. So in the, in the long run, I would say the best way to handle this right now is we're gonna approach these offers of compensation as they come in and negotiate them on a case-by-case -case basis. Definitely, while well, still um, advising our sellers to make sure they're making decisions that are best for them in the long term as far as attracting the most amount of buyers to their property. Right. But rest assured, we have done our research. We are taking every class as it comes out, leaning into any potential changes that could be drafted along our way. And you're in great hands as we navigate these changes together and first and foremost, get you the results you're looking for. Definitely. We want your, we want your listing to be very, very attractive to buyers. And we really want your listing to stand out. And so part of this learning curve for us is making sure that we're marketing your property in a way that's going to give you the biggest pool of buyer clients potentially. And so um, as we navigate this, I think we're coming up with some really amazing strategies to help our clients. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have additional questions related to the settlement, I know that they will be coming up on a regular basis. Please feel free to reach out to Amy or myself. We will answer those as succinctly and directly as we can and also use that opportunity to provide more um, detailed education to you to make sure that your questions are answered.